Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Emma. In this video, I will tell you about memory dump formats and types of memory acquisition. As you work with different memory acquisition tools, you will observe that each tool acquires memory in different formats, like the ones shown here. Now, think about the RAM on your computer. It may be 8 GB or 16 GB. Within the RAM, information about recent activity is stored. During memory acquisition, when the data present in memory is copied exactly as it exists, then the memory dump is referred to as a raw dump, and it typically has the raw extension. Some tools add a header to the acquired memory dump with additional information about the acquisition. Memory dumps with a header typically have other extensions like bin or DMP or MEM. When a Windows computer crashes, a dump file is generated for it with information about recent activity on the system. This file exists in a special crash dump format. It is also possible to manually generate a Windows crash dump. The hibernation file on a Windows computer has a compressed copy of the RAM contents. The memory dump can be extracted from the hibernation file using tools. A hibernation file gives insight into activities on a computer before it was hibernated. Volatility can process memory dumps present in any of the formats shown here. You can even convert a file present in crash dump format or bin format to a raw memory dump. Being aware of the different memory dump formats will help you approach memory forensics better. Now, let's talk about the types of memory acquisition. When you have physical access to the computer from which you intend to acquire memory, it is referred to as local acquisition. The generated dump is typically stored in external USB drives or hard drives. When you do not have access to the computer, for example, a machine in the cloud, then you will have to resort to remote acquisition. As the dump is being acquired, it will be stored on your computer. In both acquisition types, you can store the memory dump as a single file, or you can store it in parts, referred to as split images. The individual parts can be combined together to a complete file before analysis. Here's what you can do next. Set up a memory forensics lab at home. Execute a malware sample in your isolated environment. Utilize two different tools to acquire memory from the infected machine. Notice the different formats in which the dumps exist. Analyze the acquired dumps. Once you have practiced acquiring local dumps, experiment with remote acquisition. The tool dump it has command line switches to support acquiring memory remotely. Knowledge about memory acquisition tools, memory dump formats, acquisition types, and memory analysis tools, coupled with practical experience in your home lab, will prepare you greatly to assist in real-world investigations. You will find links to more memory forensics videos from our channel in the description box below. I am sure it will help you in your memory forensics journey. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!